So I've been hanging out with Chris and Arlie at the Good Day Curiosity Shop space a bunch since I moved back to Gunnison this past summer. I really love just kind of poking my head in to see what both of them are working on. And I really have always been curious about the bike fabrication side of things, how bikes and steel bikes in particular are made. So I asked Chris if he could share a few tidbits in front of a camera and he agreed. So in this video, we cover a few of the questions that I had, such as how do lugs actually work, the different styles of fillet brazing, and the science behind TIG welding. All right, let's do it. All right, so before Chris takes over the camera, I just wanted to let everybody know that this video is supported in part by Salsa Cycles. And speaking of brazing, by now many of you have heard of three-pack mounts or brazons. One of the first brands to adopt three-pack mounts was Salsa, as they were looking for more weight capacity to carry cargo. For them, that solution was the Anything Cage and Anything Cage HD. So when you're seeking that extra cargo or simply just need to find more room on your bike, the Anything Cage HD kit can help you store clothes, food, sleep kit, candy, beer, really whatever you need. So to learn a little bit more about the Anything Cage HD kit, make sure to hit this card right here or find the link in the description below. Start with the two first right here because of just the age, it's the older style of them. With these guys, we're gonna be using oxygen and acetylene to weld these. Older style, this was built before we had electricity. That's how we made bikes before then. All right, lugs. Um, is an old style of welding, lower temperature. It's not actually fillet brazing. It's actually, uh, it's just soldering because it's a lower temperature. Um, the two materials you're gonna see a lot of people using is silver and brass, both designed around bicycles. The silver I use is, I only use it for lugs and say your brazon, say like your cable stops and stuff like that. You'll see a lot of that just because it's super clean, less material, and it just makes a beautiful crisp edge. And that's what we're trying to do with lugs. And that's gonna be, that's really the only spot you're gonna see silver used. Um, you can use it in other places. I don't use it that way. I don't know tons about lugs. I just stay away from because it's fixed numbers. We'll go to fillet brazing where it's a little bit higher temperature. Um, it's gonna be about 1800 degrees, give or take, depending how you do it. Everybody does it a little different. And the nice thing about fillet brazing is you can change the angles of everything. Say like, Say with this bike, it's got kind of the Dutch style or the low top tube. It'd be really far hard to find a lug like this. And what you're gonna see for materials with that guy is brass. And it's just a stronger material. It's gonna melt at a higher temperature and it's gonna be able to fill that joint, build it up big. That's what a, a fillet braze is. There's a couple different styles you can do. You can do the, the fully raw look, which you'll see uh, money cycles, where it's just like big fatty fillet braids that almost look like a dime stack. I like the road world style of it. I like it really cleaned up. And that's, the, that's what you'll see, like say the old Schwinn's or say like a, an old Tom Ritchie or something like that. We, it's just, it looks very nice. Cleaning wise, it's, it's pretty complicated. And I'm actually filing this slight bit. You can actually see it on the down tube here. You can see how it's rough. So you're actually filing all this down and you're creating a nice smooth surface there. Basically, if you wanna get it fully dialed, perfectly smooth, you actually take a sandpaper, um, a long strip, and you actually clean these guys up a lot. I would say by the time I'm done with this frame, with sanding and all that stuff, I'm probably gonna have 20 hours of sanding on this bike. So that's the downfall with fillet brazing. It's a lot more work. That's why you see a higher price too on that end. These two are gonna be the same welding process. You basically have a torch and it's a gas that's coming out of here. We're gonna light the, ox or the acetylene on uh, fire first and then we actually turn on the uh, oxygen afterwards, which will bring it up to the temp we need to weld. The lugs, we're gonna go lower temperature because we're using silver and we don't need the temperature to melt the brass. So we're gonna bring the temperature down, we're gonna wash the heat. We also use this, it's called flux. It protects the metal, it doesn't allow it to oxidize. It allows the brass and silver to flow. And brass and silver have different flux, but you coat the whole joint. And how I was explained, you want it to look like toothpaste when you put it on the joint. 
the material is going to want to try to flow where all the flux is. If you don't have flux, it's not going to want to go there. That's the process to fillet brazing and um, doing lugs. And the difference between these two, fillet brazing, is I have to cut this joint to fit perfectly together here. And then I actually do two passes on this. I like to fill the fillet part is if I'm filling behind. And then I actually do a next round and fill behind there and fill it up so it actually has some structure to it. Um, you would cover that whole joint. So say with this guy, I would cover this whole section, probably down to here and all that. And that's just gonna protect it from heat. It's gonna uh, make it so it doesn't oxidize. So the, the material you're putting on there will go where you want it. And it it's an indicator too. So it's gonna start out white. It's also gonna change a little bit and that's gonna give me an indicator that it's time to put the metal on there. It turns a super clear color and that's when you start adding that brass. This is the modern way we do a lot of stuff. Um, I still do a lot of brazing. I do some lugging, I do all that. I think it's all important. If you're a welder, it's nice to do it all. The joints have to be much tighter. Um, you can't have any sort of gaps. It has to be very tight. The process is a lot different. Like I was saying, we're using, we're using electricity um, and I'm using a welding torch. We got a little electrode in here. So this is where the electricity is gonna come out. A foot pedal. The more I push in, the more electricity. The less I push in, the less electricity. Um, and then we have a ground. My, ma my table's made out of metal, so I usually strap it to the, ta the table, and that's how I kind of weld it. So we're creating a current going through this. To so say like this bike, like all these bikes have um, high-end bicycle tubing. They're butted, they're heat treated, air cooled, air hardened. It's, it's fancy tubing. Um, so say with a heat treated tube that's air hardened, if we have less time with that heat on that joint, it means the air hardening and the heat treating isn't getting messed up throughout the tube. The joint's just gonna be stronger, the tube's not affected, the ride quality of the bike's gonna be there. Um, not saying that fillet brazing, because it is a lower temperature, it's not messing up the tube so much. Say like with this, we have the flux with putting on these joints, protecting them, making the oxidizing not happen. Um, allowing the heat to go where it needs to go. This is a little different. We're gonna shield the weld so we don't burn the oxygen from the tungsten, which is the electrode, to the piece of metal. So we need a shielding gas. The standard is um, argon, and it's a shielding gas, inert gas. The energy you're putting there is melting the metal instead of burning the oxygen on the weld. Um, if you try to do it without it, it just burns up. We're using brass and silver for these two, which isn't, it's, it's a different metal. We're using a like metal. So we're using a steel, chromoly, stainless, something that's gonna be very similar to the joint we're building, which we're, we're really welding at this point. Um, this, in my opinion, is a little bit more like metal gluing. Um, we're using a different material, to create a joint that's gonna to hold together. There is some, some fusion between those guys, but it's not very much. When you're doing a TIG weld, they are trying to get, like what I was saying is there's, with a, a braze, there's two different styles to do it. There's the raw, which would be the big kind of dime stacky looking. And when I, when I mean dime stacky, it comes from TIG welding. And what you're trying to do is make those puddles look as perfect, as perfect as you can. The width, the, the temperature you're putting them at, um, all that stuff. So that's the tricky part. This is gonna be the thickest part of your bike right here. So you can see how thick that is. It's probably a mil and a half thick. Um, these tubes are getting almost down to a half a mil thick. We gotta be able to change that angle. So that's the tricky part with doing TIG welding. Um, it's just trying to make all that even. Um, and also when you're doing a joint, we're putting so much heat on that thing. We gotta switch around. You can't be just hanging out right here, welding all the way around. That frame will be totally bent. So what we're doing is doing little sections all the way around to keep that thing fully aligned. And you'll actually see some starts and stops and stuff like that on there. It's just showing that it's a hand-built frame. The TIG welding, because it is a like material, the tensile strength, all that stuff is going to be um, in testing is going to be a stronger material. Fillet brazing is 
very strong. If it's all done correctly, it should, in theory, be all strong. Um, but down to the science of it, TIG welding is stronger. So that is about it, and wow, did I learn a lot. I guess the main takeaway here from my previous question is brass is typically used for fillet brazing, and there's multiple styles of fillet brazing. And obviously it can take hours to clean up if that's your style and what you're going for. And of course, TIG welding is the modern way to build a bike. And it seems like it's the most complicated and difficult of the bunch as well. So what's your style of steel frame? Do you prefer lugged, fillet braised, TIG welding? Let us know in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, pedal further.